Hello chess family, it's me, National Master Jesse James, and today we're going over how to play against the closed Sicilian. Typically what happens is white is going to keep the king side closed, not making any pawn trades, and then push the king side pawns to try and open up our position for black. Here we're going to go over the plans here for black and white, and well, we're also going to be talking about the dark squares versus large squares in this game. So, let's get to it. As you can see, this is pretty much a very critical moment in the middle game. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning, and here we go. I'm playing the black side. My opponent played pawn to e4. You know me, I'm going to go for my Sicilian, pawn to c5. Here, knight c3 gets played, and already this lets me know two di two different things. Either, gonna, either they're going to be playing the close Sicilian, or they're going to be playing the Grand Prix attack. Either way, the best way to play against this is to play g6. You might be asking, hey, how do you know that this is the best way? Well, the reason why I know this is the best way to play is because both of these systems involve kingside attacks, and they go for it right away. So the Fianchetto is going to help give extra defense to this idea because, well, it's really hard to, to beat a, a uh, Fianchetto system as far as kingside attack. Typically, you have to go the other way. Don't get me wrong. You can still win against the Fianchetto system, but this is going to be a good way to defend against it. So g6 is one of the highest uh, recommendations I can give against either system, the Grand Prix or the Close Sicilian. Here we go. White played pawn g3. We definitely know they're going Close Sicilian now. Here their idea is they're going to go ahead and Fianchetto and push these pawns forward. So what do we do here as black? Well, let's continue development for a little bit. Here we play bishop g7. White plays bishop g2. And here, this is the move I recommend. We're going to go ahead and play pawn to d6. Now, typically, I do not like playing pawn to d to d6. I prefer e6 and d5, but I've just found if you do try that in these kind of situations, um, white will switch their target, and they actually will just target the d5 pawn because, look, the bishop's already aimed there, the knight's already aimed there. Don't do this. Let's go ahead and play pawn d6, and this goes along with the plan. You know, whenever you're uh, playing your games, you should always have a definite plan. And here the definite plan for black is, well, let's ask you, what do you think black's best plan is? Should we go kingside attack? Should we go for the center? Or should we go queenside? I'll give you a hint. Look at the pawn structure, and the pawn structure will actually point to where you should be attacking. Here, white's going to be posing their pawn structure like this. They're definitely going to be going kingside attack. And they're going to try to keep the position closed because, well, if I can counterattack in the center, it's going to stop the attack on the king side. So what am I doing here? I'm going queen side. And so just follow the pawn structure. Here you're going to see me play b5, b4, a5, a4. That's the best plan here. Try to push your pawns on the queen side and try not to move any pawns over here if you can. Remember, if you make any pawn moves where you're weak at, aka the king side, because that's where they're building up at, you're going to create weaknesses that they can take advantage of. So here, stay sturdy, create your own counterplay on the queen side. Uh, let's go a little bit deeper now. Here, white plays pawn d3. Like I said, their pawn structure is pointing king side. Let's keep developing. The knight goes to c6 here. Here we have very good control over the dark squares, and you can see that white has very good control over the light squares. Here, bishop b3 gets played. A very good move here. Very solid. The idea is that they want to go queen d2 here, and then they're going to trade off the bishops. This is one of my best defenders. Uh, just like I said, a min and fianchetto system. This bishop is not worth three points anymore. This one is actually worth about five or six. It is a very good defender, but also a very good, uh, good attacker. So... If you can win this bishop, you're typically going to be strategically winning. Vice versa, if white can win this bishop over here, they typically are going to be strategically winning. Will they win the game? Not always, right? There's always tactical mistakes. The game is, is, a, is a chess game after all. There's always things going on. But if you can win your opponent's bishops whenever you're fianchetto, you're typically going to be strategically better. And here, I was able to do that. Here I played knight f6, a simple move. And here my opponent made the mistake. Wah, wah, queen to d2. What do you play here? Here, I'm very happy. The bishop is actually trapped. Again, like I said, white played queen to d2 to trade off this bishop, and this would have been very good for them. Unfortunately, I had knight to g4, and the bishop will be trapped. Um, here, they played it pretty simple. They just played pawn f4. But any way that they try to move the bishop, I will definitely hunt it down like a dog. F, uh, bishop f4, I'll play e5. Bishop g5, I'll go f6. Like, this bishop is just mine here. So it didn't really matter. Um, I guess computer just doesn't like the move order for this. So, well, white just went ahead with their regular idea and played pawn to f4. And here, I'm very happy. Knight takes on e3. Queen takes on e3. And already, the computer is giving me a significant advantage at negative 0.72 basically saying although the uh, you know although the material on the board or the pieces are counted the same it's saying i'm up an extra pawn and it's all because white lost their dark square bishop they're not going to be able to trade off now i have very good chances on defending because if you can't get rid of this guy well it's going to be very hard to checkmate my king all right here we go 
What do we do next? Well, let's just continue with the plan. We're going to go ahead and castle. Here, white played knight to e2. Again, they're sticking with their plan. And here, I went ahead and played bishop g4. Another key idea. So you can hold on to this bishop. In fact, computer likes to play bishop to d7. But I like to treat this just like if I were playing a king's Indian defense. And, well, when I'm playing king's Indian defense, you can trade this bishop out for the knight. As you can kind of see here, the bishop really doesn't have many too, uh, too many good squares in this position. I mean, bishop d7 is literally one of the best squares for it. You don't want to put it on b7 because then you're going to block the b5, b4 push. So bishop d7 typically gets played. So the computer doesn't like this. I'm, I like this because it's going to stay... Uh, stay involved with what my plan is, which is to play on the dark squares. Here, my opponent played h3. I said, thank you. How did you know I wanted to trade? Bishop takes, queen takes, and now I went ahead and played knight to d4 here. The computer doesn't like this move because the knight can get kicked away later on, but it's a nice little tempo move off the queen. The queen went ahead and went to f2, and this is the point where we got to start looking for a plan. What, is, what should we do in this situation? Remember we said, push the queenside pawns. You have to create counterplay. If you allow, white will slowly just start creeping up on you, and then they're going to be end up checkmating you pretty soon. So what do you play? Here we go. Pawn to b5. b5, b4, a5, a4, and then maybe the rook goes to b or to c8, just depending on where the, uh, where the help is needed. Here, white went ahead and castled, and of course, you see me. I'm always going to be consistent. Pawn to b4, kicking the knight. Here, knight to d1 gets played. It looks like a strange move, but you can't really play knight to e2 right here as knight takes on uh, c2 can just get played. So that's why knight to d1 gets played. In fact, this is a very common move to get played. Here, the knight is so strong that the common idea here for white is to play pawn to c3. And this actually does get played in the game. So let's go ahead and keep consistent. I went ahead and played pawn to a5 here. My, again, my idea, push these pawns forward. Here the computer is suggesting knight b5, which is a, uh, a, another good move here, but I like to stay consistent with, with these moves. a5, pawn c3 gets played. Should I make trades? You can definitely make trades here because if you make a trade over here, you're opening up the queen side. And the more they focus over on your side of the board, the less likely they are to attack you. And who's ever uh, is able to persuade their opponent to look at their side more or play on that side more is typically going to be winning. Here I went ahead and played. Knight b5, I want them to trade so I can open up my bishop. Also have little plans like bishop to d4 ideas. And here my opponent starts making some very bad strategic moves. Here white played, pawn c4. Remember I said I'm playing on the dark squares? Well, here you can see that this is very, very good for me. In fact, the d4 square is now called an outpost square, which means, well, it's, it's an outpost in your opponent's territory. So you're going to be able to keep your piece there, and it can't be easily kicked away. As a, as a, if a pawn can't kick it, it's going to be happy there. So my knight just jumped back to d4, and here my opponent got a little too aggressive and played pawn to e5. Here he's going to help open up the position for me. So here e5 does come with a threat. What's the threat? Here, with the pawn coming out, the bishop is now attacking my rook. To be honest, I wouldn't even be too sad if I lost the rook for the uh, exchange here. I would just take back with the queen, and I probably would have a decent game there. But no need to go into complications. I'm already in a better position. I went ahead and played. Rook over to b8. Uh, rook c8 is also another good move here. But again, the plan, a4, a3. So, e takes on d6. And I went ahead and played e takes on d6. Apparently, this was the wrong move. Queen takes on d6 with the idea of e5 is even a, a bit stronger here. But uh, pawn takes on d6, not losing the game by any means. Here, white played knight e3. It makes sense. The knight is looking to go to this very nice light square over here on d5 and here i continue with my plan pawn to a4 here white played knight to d5 here and well i saw an idea to play on the king side so i went ahead and played pawn to h5 the idea here is to try to make weaknesses on the dark squares here the computer is saying hey you've been saying all these moves uh you want to go a3 and you didn't play it uh you know sometimes you just see something and you're like okay i'm gonna go for this too i'm playing on both sides of the board here you can see that i've pretty much conquered the center here well they have a good center here with their knight but i've also got pressure on the queen side and now i want to go for the king side i want to try to control the whole board all right so i played h5 they went ahead and played Rook a e1, it makes sense. The rook goes to an open file. And here was my plan, knight to f5. Now, this is a, a little tricky move. What is my threat right here? All right, guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and give, it, go ahead and give us that like and subscribe. Remember, giving us likes is going to help share this video with other players.
the idea here was my little cheapo is I'm going for bishop to d4 for a pin and a win. But the other plan I have is, again, like I said, I want to control the dark squares. So my real idea is actually to play pawn h4. And if they play g4, well, the knight jumps into the g3 square, and my bishop will go to d4. My knight will be on g3. Both my pieces are going to be on some great squares, on great outposts in my opponent's territory. Here, my opponent... Uh, saw the threat of bishop d4 and did not handle this correctly. Here they're supposed to play king h2 uh, just because it, it uh, leaves a tempo here. I play pawn to h4. Oh, I'm sorry. I play bishop d4 real quick. Pawn h4 is also a very good move, but here a free tempo off the queen. Here queen f3 gets played, and now you see why the king on h1 was not the best move. Now when I play h4, you notice that they can't just play g4 here because knight g3 check will be forking. That's why that king was supposed to go to h2. You can see here that the dark squares are so weak here, and I've pretty much been able to conquer all of them. So, after this, black was uh, uh, white was pretty much forced to play. Pawn takes on h4. You can see that the pawn structure is messed up. The dark squares are weak. Queen takes on h4. I might even have some ideas later on about playing king g7 and then sliding my rook over to h8. I mean, what's the e-file doing over here? White really can't take advantage of it. It's pretty much guarded, and uh, the back rank is guarded here too. Of course, I could snack a pawn over here, but, well... In these kind of juicy situations, uh, there's always some fun things to do. Right now, the new threat is knight to g3 check. So knight g3 check forking the rook over here on f1. White went ahead and played the only move they can think of. Rook over to g1 here. I, um, it, I guess the thought uh, being is maybe it's best for me to lose my dark square bishop because this is one of my main defenders here. That might be one of the ideas. Um, here, well, I just kept it nice and simple. The rook's not going anywhere. Rook b to e8. And here, well, he went ahead and took because he wants to try to get the rook out of there. Rook takes, rook takes. Here, he should have looked about trying to move the rook away. Although here, again, I just have some really deadly threats. Um, let's say he moved the rook over to, I don't know, b1 to defend it. Now I have some nice ideas here with rook e1 check here. I think I might be, oof, it says negative 6 here, so I might be... Uh, winning material, if not just checkmating. I also have another cool idea here. I could play, I could play rook to e2 here. Uh, again, penetrating on the second rank. Notice that the queen should not take because a knight g3 check. So the, the position has pretty much fallen over here. Uh, he does not last too long um, after this. In the game, he went ahead and just played bishop f1. And, uh, well, simple chess now. I just take. King takes. Rook over to e1. Pin it and win it. Queen f2 got played, and it's like, how did you know I do want to make a queen trade here? The end game is pretty simple to win. Queen takes f2 check. King takes rook over to b1. There's really no good way to stop the loss of the pawns. And once the pawns fall, I'm going to have two uh, baby new girls over here on the queen side. Pawn to b3 check. Rook takes knight check. King over, knight check, king over. And at this point, they can pretty much just resign. The game went on for a few more moves, but... I did want to just talk about the critical ideas. Remember, whenever you are playing the black side, it's best to go queen side and just go and follow the pawn chain over here. That's why I recommend pawn the d6. It's going to be best to fiend keto as black against this system. And also remember, if you can win this bishop for, with this knight, you're going to be strategically better. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>